Good evening, everyone. Kate with Pure Pondering. Uh, here we are heading towards the end of May, May 24th, 2021. And it's been an interesting month. The temperatures last week, actually Saturday, it was 63 degrees out for the high. And then it was 73 uh, yesterday, Sunday. I'm not sure. I haven't checked what the high was today. It has been an interesting few weeks weather-wise. It's also been um, interesting with just dealing with people. But I had a few things I wanted to talk about. Gardening, of course. My supper tonight, if I can get this to turn here, is almost completely from what we've raised. My salad greens, hard-boiled eggs from our chickens. Uh, of course, the dressing I bought at the store and my water with a little bit of um, electrolyte powder in it. Don't have the electrolyte powder. I have to purchase that. I'm anticipating eventually getting to the point where I have things in my garden that will help so I don't need the electrolyte powder. But it's a slow process. We always have to remember to have patience as we go through this process. Um, one of the things, many of us have different hidden um, challenges, health challenges, mental health challenges, things of that nature. Uh, so one of the things that's beneficial for us to remember and for those around us to remember is a little thing called spoon theory. And I'll link uh, below the, uh, uh, and I'll put a card up, the story behind spoon theory. There's an article about the woman who came up with the idea as a way to explain the, um, why those of us with particular challenges run out of energy. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Lovely little one I have, uh, and mother duties come first before YouTube videos. Uh, spoon theory. So this lady was trying to explain her in energy levels and why, let me just get a little bit of there on my lovely Maxine. Um, she was trying to explain to a friend one day why some days she has more energy and then she does other days. Some days she can get more accomplished than she can other days. And where they were at, if I remember the story correctly, like I said, I will have it linked, have a card up here. Um, the, they were in a restaurant and as she was trying to figure out how to explain this, she came upon an idea. She grabbed all the spoons from everywhere around them on their table, the next table over, any spoons that were not being used. And she got a certain number of spoons in her hand. She told her friend, okay, imagine this is all the energy you have for the day. And waking up, getting out of bed, that takes a certain amount of spoons. Getting breakfast, getting brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, showering, those all take a certain number of spoons. Getting out the door, going to work, the work that you do with other people, interacting with people, those all take a certain amount of spoons. Now, if you had a rough night the night before, didn't get enough sleep, you're starting the day with a deficit in spoons. You don't have as many as you should have to start. If the day before you overdid things, that may have stolen some spoons from today. So, that would have taken something you didn't have as many to start. So you're more tired. You have less energy to get through your daily tasks. You're at work. You get done with work. You come home. That takes a certain amount of spoons. On the way home, you have to stop at the store. That takes a certain amount of spoons. You get home, you have to fix supper. You have to do chores around the house. There, you know, there are all the things that we need to do before we go to bed at night. Those all take a certain number of spoons. Well, 
if you run out of spoons before you get everything done that you need to do during the day, then there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get done. That's the short and the sweet of it. Uh, it's much better in explanation on the link that I provided. One of the things that when we run out of energy, when we run out of our spoons, and we don't get things done, sometimes we feel like a failure. We're disappointing ourselves. Or if we're on the outside looking in at someone else, we feel disappointed in the person who's run out of spoons. And that's not really fair to them. They only have so much energy. Instead of feeling disappointed, step up and help them. Um, if you're one of those folks who runs out of spoons, don't be so judgmental on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, there's only so much you can do. To I've been doing. Okay, so I'm talking about the failures and the disappointments that we come across in life. Sometimes those failures and the disappointments rob us of additional spoons, rob us of additional ability to get things done. One of the things, um, I can talk about my Moringa trees. During, you know, early on, January, February, I had started some Moringa trees inside. They were doing wonderfully. They were growing so well. I was so happy because Moringa is one of my goals. Having Moringa in my food forest is one of my goals. And these trees were growing wonderfully. But last October... God changed my mind about something I had been telling this one right here. She had been asking me for a couple of years for a kitten. And I told her we didn't need a kitten. But God changed my mind. And we found a small kitten about the size of my hand. Out in the chicken yard. Huddled up underneath the wings of the chicken. He had gotten separated from his mother somehow. So, okay, she gets a cat. <laughs> well, so this kitten, as he's growing, he, you know, he's, we, we feed him milk and, and we, um, yes, and you fed him a bunch of milk, didn't you? Yeah, and I fed him a lot of what, 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 and kitty food. What, what, I mean, kitty <laughs> But, so when we found him in October, he may have been a Maybe four to six weeks old. He wasn't very big at all. Like I said, about the size of the... I could hold him in the palm of my hand. Me too. <laughs> okay, move your hand. Let's tell the story. Bye. So, here we come to end of February, beginning of March. This kitten has figured out how to jump up where I have all my seed starts. And he discovers that he likes vegetables. He started eating all my seedlings, including my moringa. He ate the pumpkin. He ate the beans. And he ate all but three of my moringa plants before I got them hidden. Came home one day and they were just, everything was gone. Sweetie. I know, but I'm Okay, candy. Candy's bad for you. The sugar will make holes in your teeth and it will hurt. I don't feel anything. And then make like, your teeth fall out. And then, how are you going to bite them? Yeah. How are you going to bite into apple? When those bottom teeth fell out, how difficult it was to bite into them. Well, if they get cavities and they come out because of cavities, you don't have any teeth growing back here. <coughs> okay. So, you have to take care of your teeth, right? Go brush them. Thank you. All right, back to my story. So, the cat was eating all my seedlings, including my moringa. 
so then once it was warm enough, I moved the moringa in its little containers outside um, in a sheltered spot in my uh, between my uh, beds of salad greens. I was doing really well. Then last week, it was big enough. Moved it on out to um, a little area in our new big garden, the big garden area we've been working on. And it was doing wonderfully, growing really, really well. Saturday morning I went out there, it was looking beautiful, watered everything. Saturday afternoon we went out there, something had gotten out there and pulled up the moringa by its roots. My last moringa seedling. I was heartbroken. And then I realized not only had it pulled up the moringa, it had pulled up all of my Malabar spinach that was coming up. It had pulled up the beans that were coming up. I didn't find the remains of the Malabar spinach. I did not find the remains of the beans. I did find the little baby moringa tree from up to the side. So I've got it put into another area over in the at the uh, end of the first hugel culture bed where the soil stays nice and moist hoping that it revives so it's been there for that was saturday i did that saturday afternoon so it's been out there for two days now two and a half days i'm hoping it revives but i do have thankfully i have just a handful maybe three moringa seeds I'm going to try again. Uh, see if I can get some more started. Keep them where the cat can't get to them. Get them out into the food forest. He's over there somewhere, baby. I saw him go that way. Um, but as we're working through disappointments like this, we can find inspiration. With our tomato plants. When I have purchased a tomato plant, I got a few containers that had multiple plants in them. The day that I got them, I was not in a great mood. And I know myself, I know not to garden when I am not in the appropriate mood for nurturing the plant. It helps me calm down, but it doesn't help the plants so much. So I got out there and I was trying to separate these tomato plants. And then I got fed up and I only had them halfway separated and I just set them in, you know, plenty of spacing where if the roots spread out where they are at, then we'll still be good. They've got plenty of room for the roots for both sets of plants to spread and for the plants to go up. He doesn't want to be on the video, sweetheart. But again, a disappointment. It looked like of the nine, 10, 11, 12. It looked like of the 12 tomato plants I set out, half of them weren't going to make it. Inspiration to encourage me on this Moringa disappointment. The last few days I have been seeing where the half of the tomato plants that I thought were not going to make it are looking greener. They're putting on new leaves. And the ones that I knew were going to make it are getting larger. That's on my video, uh, my other video that I did today. Um, we were actually having to prune one of them and the stems that we pruned off were actually a good enough size for us to put in soil with a uh, rooting compound. So hopefully we will have many, many more tomato plants. I think it was the sun gold. I'll have to look at that label again. Uh, a little sweet, really sweet cherry tomato. But it's inspiring me that what I thought was dead is coming back. So that gives me more hope on the Moringas. So look for those little inspirations. In addition, every morning, no matter how 
far as the previous day has been. God gives us a bit of inspiration first thing every morning with the sunrise. I've had, I think in the last week I've had one day that I've not gone out and done a video of the sunrise. It helps me so much. It helps me. I'm not sure if it helps anyone else who may watch those sunrise videos I'm doing, but it helps me to get my day started in the right frame of mind with positivity and knowing that God is there and it's a new day no matter what happened the day before we can do it and keep going and for that that brings me to thankfulness we if we watch for those little things those little bits of inspiration and we approach life in a thankful manner and no matter how difficult the day is we thank the people around us. We thank God. We thank those around us for the little things they do for us that help us to get through the day. If somebody makes a pot of coffee instead of you having to do it. If somebody brings you a little treat. Uh, there is a lovely lady, one of our patients at the office, um, the other day only popped her head into my, at, to my office space long enough to bring me these little homemade cookies, um, shortbread with little cherry cordials on top. They were lovely. Now, not great for my diet. Oh, well, <laughs> I've got, I've got my salad I eat every night at supper. Sorry, another brief interruption. Somebody discovered her new shoes. <laughs> Problem is, since I ordered them online, another challenge. I ordered them online, they're too big. So, thankfully, I still had a credit with the store, so I was able to order another pair, which should be here at the end of the week. Um, thankfulness. Okay, there we go. Challenge. The shoes that came in um, were too large. Thankfully, I still have store credit, so I was able to order more. So the right size should be here um, in just a few days. And her boots are still in good enough shape. She can wear them. They will only be farm boots once she gets her new shoes in. <laughs> I'm very thankful for that lovely lady who... shows her appreciation by just popping in, giving us just a little thing. Sometimes people just pop in to the office and just say thank you. Or just say, hi, how are you doing? I was thinking about you. I'm sure everybody else appreciates that as much as those of us who are frontline workers those of us who work in the medical field, people who work in restaurants, people who, the, the phenomenal people, I make sure I tell, every week I tell the, the folks at the daycare we use how much I appreciate them because through the entire shutdown, other people couldn't go to work and here I'm a frontline worker, they managed to stay open all but two weeks when they shut towards the end of where everything was shut down they closed down for two weeks to do a deep clean and you know they're cleaning every day that place smells like bleach so strong of bleach when I get there to pick Mike up in the evening um she's usually one of the last children she's one of the first children there in the morning one of the last ones to leave in the evening because you know my entire office we are working all day long to try to do what we can to help people who need us. So, thankfulness leads to appreciation. Show the people who are doing things for you. Show the people in your life. Show the people who just smile at you on the street. Show them how much you appreciate them. Yeah, you know, as you're, if you're having a bad day and you're walking down the street and somebody smiles at you and says hello, that right there can help boost your spirit. 
smile back. You know, tell them thank you. Or just say hello back to them. Let them know you appreciate that they took that two seconds to smile and say hello. To help raise your spirit. And, you know, that's just, you wouldn't believe. Maybe you do. Think about it. When somebody shows you how much they appreciate you, that renews your ability to put in the effort to get the things done you need to do. And when people are appreciative, that makes you want to strive even harder to do the things that they need you to do. Whereas, my last point here, the people who burn their bridges, the people who come in being jerks, people who come in complaining, the people who, I'm just going to be blunt, the ones who are just absolute assholes. And not only to you, to other people, to anybody you're in the circle of folks who are trying to help them. You're burning your bridges. Don't burn your bridges. Show your appreciation to people. Show them that you know that they are putting in the effort and that you are thankful for everything that they're doing to try to help you, to get you to the point, to get the things done that you need done. Don't burn your bridges. Don't be a jerk and then go say, well, I'm just going to go somewhere else because you didn't do what I'm ordering you to do. Don't do that. Work with them. Work. Be a team. Just don't be a jerk. And uh, enjoy. Get up in the mornings if you can. And enjoy the sunrise. If you can't, I have sunrise uh, videos of you know, desert sunrises. Mark Charles. I'll link one of his Potomac Sunrises here. Um, he's from the desert, now lives near the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. And he gets up every morning and does these amazing sunrises over the Potomac River, um, which is what inspired me to do the sunrises here in the desert. Because it is so beautiful, it's inspiring. And quite frankly, when I'm having a really difficult time of things at work, I take a few minutes to go look at one of his sunrises and listen to the birds in the Potomac and listen to the prayer that he offers. Or I take a few minutes and watch one of the sunrises that I've taped and listen to the birds singing and remember that God has given me a fresh day to start. Now, if you have time, I have another video that's going to be going up of the um, things that are growing in the garden. But this video is already 23 and a half minutes, so I'm not going to attach it to this. I'll, I'll upload that one separately. This is this is Kate with Pure Pondering and Micah. Micah did in chat. Um, and do I some Micah. And one, two, three, three <laughs> socks. I mean, okay, one, we're two, getting to the end. We're telling everybody one, two, bye. Three, four. Hey, we're telling everybody have a good evening. Have be blessed. Evening. Come be blessed. Be blessed with a pause. God loves Peace you. Peace out. <laughs>